So let's start with first of all the JSON model. So what is the JSON model? So as the name suggests, JSON model will work on JSON data. OK, whenever uh, guys, whenever you're reading uh, information from any database through OData service, whatever the data you will receive, that data will be of JSON format. And whenever you want to work with that JSON kind of data, you can go with JSON model. OK, so JSON model, it's like a client side model. It's if, if you want to store a data and that data is not huge, OK, it, it, it will work with only limited set of data. It's not like that you can store 2 lakh, 3 lakh or 10 lakhs of data. That's not a good practice to store and that kind of records in, in JSON model. It's only meant to store small records like uh, 500, 1000 or 2000, not more than that. If you're storing it also, for sure it will affect the performance of the app. So how the data that you need, you can just based on some pagination concept or you can just uh, pass the query parameters like dollar top, dollar skip. You can use that those query parameters and only that kind of records you can fetch. Only that much of records you can fetch. OK, so let's get started with the JSON model, how the JSON model will work and basically what type of data it can accept in JSON model. So first of all, guys, at least you got it. What is the model in UI5? Models are only like it is like a container which will hold the data on client side, means on the application uh, application level. If your application is getting destroyed or if it is closed, so in that case, whatever the data we have stored so far inside the client side model, that will be gone. It's not same case with the OData model, which is a server side model. Because whatever, let's say you're reading the information. So that data is available with you till your application is running. But now let's say you're doing some CRUD operations on the database. You're calling some uh, create entity or some update entity or that kind of entities if you're calling and if you're performing all that operations. So for sure, whatever you do, that will be stored and that will be tracked in your database. But when it comes to the client side, yes, you can go with JSON model. Okay, one second. So, yeah. So now the important thing is, what is the main purpose of models in this? The main thing is that, Let's say if you're storing information in a model, we can also store this information in variable. That is also possible. Why we need to go with the models, first of all. On client side, as JavaScript, it's, it's like a scripting language which already provides uh, various types of variables. It provides objects, it provides arrays, everything it pro already provides. So we can also store that information in those variables. But why we need models, first of all? The, the main thing about model is the one use case which I told you that that it, it will communicate with your database. So for that purpose, it, it's OK that we are using models. But what can be the next thing? Next thing is mean like data binding. So data binding you cannot do with the normal variables, right? Data bind you cannot do with the normal variables. Models it's like it provides a basic feature like data binding. So data binding means you're binding a data source to the controls. So let's let's say that we have a table. OK, I have a table now and uh, I want to display 1000 records inside the table. So how I will do that? How I will basically do when it comes to the variable? Let's say if in, in an array we have 1000 records. Let, if, let's consider the model is not there in the picture so far. So we are just going with the traditional approach. Let's say we have 1000 records in an array and now I want to create 1000 rows with respect to those records. So I have to use for loop for that. I have to use for loop and after that manually I will create one by one each and every row based on the data which I'm reading through that array one by one. But when it comes to the model, you don't have to write any code for for loop. Right, you will not use any traditional for loop JavaScript code and all. You will directly do data binding. OK, once you do the data binding, so with the help of aggregation concept on runtime, your records will be generated from that model data. OK, you don't have to use any variables. If you're using variables, it means you're not following best practice at all. OK, so let's let's get start with the JSON model now and let's see how the JSON model will work and what is the syntax in order to initialize JSON model. 
So let me go back here and let me open BS. Okay, so guys, I'm just uh, creating one project now, a basic JSON model project. And yeah, at the end of the session, I'll share this source code so that you guys can at least go through the uh, the source code and you can also try it from your end if it is not working. So I'm just selecting a basic Fiori application template and after that from this drop down. I have to select SAP UI5 freestyle. So guys, uh, I'm not covering all this template. Why? Because see, for beginner level, if I if I uh, if I show this template, right? It it like it's a complex template. A ready-made code is already available, and it it is being added, and you will not understand at all. I just wanted to show you that how the development is done in UIFI entirely from the scratch. Okay, that's why I'm going always. I'm going with SAP UIFI freestyle template. And then from that also, I'm just going with this blank template which we have here. So I'm not adding any data source. I can uh, I already have a couple of destination created uh, in the uh, in a BTP cloud, but I'm not going with that. Today I will show you with the basic uh, traditional way, like how we can access the data from local JSON file. Uh, okay, fine. I think. OK, I think guys, wait, wait. Uh, it's look like I need to open this properly. OK, so guys, I have just created this uh, basic project in this and I think still it is uh, installing some uh, libraries in that. 
I think we can hold for a couple of seconds here. OK, so now what we will do basically, uh, I'm just uh, we will just need a basic local JSON file here because now if I want to work with the local JSON data, so I need a data first of all, right? So from where I can get that local JSON data? Has any idea that where can we get this data? OK, I'll tell you. So basically, if you want to get a JSON local data, you want the data to be used and so that you can work on it properly. You can practice on it. You can directly go with samples here. You can go with the samples and now you can search for any table like you can search for responsive table here. OK, now as soon as you click on this responsive table, so you have a couple of examples here, right? So before you click on any one of this example, just right click on this project, sorry, on this page and click this, choose this option inspect. Now go to the network tab. And now just click on this table columns. OK, you can choose any example. That's not a problem. Second, yeah. So now here in, in the filter, there is a filter option here. So now just search for JSON. So when you search for the JSON, so for sure you will you will get one file products.json. OK, so there is one local JSON file products.json. So just double click on it. So once you double click on it, this is what the data we have here. See how many records we have here. So this is all local JSON data or sample JSON data that we can have here. OK, and we, and we will use this uh, sample JSON data only for our training purpose. So now what I will do, I will just do control. Uh, I will just copy all this code. Go back to your project. Now expand this web app. So guys, I'm just creating this uh, local JSON file inside the model folder. Right click on the model, new file, and just write products.json. That's it. OK, and just press OK. So this file will be added inside the product.json and now whatever uh, the, the code, the records that you have copied from that JSON, you can just paste it here. OK, so now after you paste, so now this comments will won't work inside this file. So just remove that. That's it. So now we have a, a file which has the sample records and we have so many records in this. We can easily work on that. OK. So, so many records we have already. So now if you look at the object, so first of all, if you look at the JSON structure, so JSON structure, it's like always it's it, it will start with opening and closing curly brackets. OK, this is how basically the JSON data will start. And now in this object, if you see, we have uh, two properties in it. One is the product collection and one is the product collection start. So these are two properties which are available inside this object, right? So now I won't be using this product collection start data. I'm just using product collection data. OK, this is what the data we will display from product collection inside the table. So first of all, before I use this data, what we have to do, how this data will be available inside the application. So that's the question, right? How we can access this data from the local JSON file into UIFA application? We have just created the local file, JSON file, but what is the process? So whenever you're creating any model, models are meant to store all this data locally, right? On the client side, models are meant to store this JSON data. And then for that, for sure, we will use JSON model only because if you have a data which is of type JSON, so we have to use or we have to go with JSON model. OK, not with any other model. So JSON model, it's, it's like a standard model and it is a best way that we can use the we, we can utilize this JSON model for JSON data. So how to first of all what we need to do first of all we need to create a data source. So this is like it, it's already a data source and now we need to provide this information to our application. How we can provide this so that controls can use this local JSON data how they can use. So for that we have we just have to go to manifest.json file. OK, so manifest.json file, it's like a descriptor file of your application where you will have each and every information of your application, like technical details of your application, like what is the version ID? What is the app ID? 
what is the title of your app what are the data source okay how many uh, o data services you have consumed in this uh, uifi application what are the uh, view files how many view files are there okay how many models are there so all this information will be available inside the manifest.json file so it's like a main descriptor file of your application without manifest your application will won't work okay so now in this manifest.json file i'm going to create a data source so when i will create a data source so this data source will be applicable in entire app means now as of now if i expand this view folder i have two view files and, and at the same time i have two controller files right so whatever data source i'm creating here so that data will be available to all the controller files and all the view files without any problem okay because manifest it's like it is being declared on the component level component means it's a parent component means under that only all other classes will be created so so this manifest we are we are initializing this manifest file inside the component.js file so if i go to this component.js file in which this component file is being extended with the help of ui component okay so this component file if you see how this component file is getting created it is being created by extending ui component so ui component it's like a parent component or you can call it as a base class of all the classes on top of that nothing is there okay so ui component is the topmost class in this uh, framework and under that only the controllers are every other things will be created so if i'm going to uh, initialize this manifest file if you see inside this component only we are calling this manifest.json file it is a place where manifest file is getting initialized so when when this file is available inside the component level so for sure the model or the data source that we create inside this manifest.json file it will be available to all the controllers and the view files because controller file and the view file they will inherit from your ui component from your component.js file only okay so now let's create a data source here so for creating the data source for sure there is one namespace sap.app so sap.app it is a namespace inside which we will create the data source and it's already been created here if you look at the structure the structure is already ready here data source and there is main source okay so now inside this data source so it's like an object and inside that we have to add we have to provide a name of data source and after that we have to add a couple of properties so now inside this data source if you see a main service it is a data source name so now this is already added so i'm adding one more data source here now so that data source will be from that product.json file okay so whatever the data we have here inside the products.json file that data we will store uh, as a data source here okay so i'm just creating a path here so this path whatever i'm going to create a name for the data source so that point out to this data this actual json data okay so first of all let me do one thing so this is closing at line number 27 so i'm just adding one comma and after that i'm going to provide a data source name so like let's say products da json data okay this is my data source name and after that now i just need to provide a path of data source here because at the end what type of data it is what type of uh, means uh, where it is stored so that basic information we have to provide in this like if you look at this main service so there are two properties which is been added for this data source like uri and type uri means uh, what is the path of that data source so this is a path and after that there is a type what type of data source it is it is of o data so same like that we have to write uri and inside the uri we have to provide a path of uh, path of products.json file so that where it is located as of now it is located inside the model so i will write model slash products.json okay so this is the path of json uh, this is a path of products.json file 
So it is a URI and after that we have to provide a type. So what type of it is? It is of type JSON. OK, because the data source that we have here, it is of type JSON only. So now our data source is ready. OK, so this data source is ready now. So now going forward, if I want to provide this data source information to any model, so I have to provide the data source name. So this is a data source name here. OK, so guys still here. Any questions you have? Anything that you you are still is anything uh, which all is clear, guys? Yeah, it is. It is clear. So, so here one out um, mm -hmm. uh, of uh, So, so we got the sample data um, mm -hmm. okay, in the product JSON file. So, so does it support the update also? It is just for reading purpose. It is just for reading purpose. Means okay. now let's now I know that what you you might what you guys are expecting means. Uh, can we update this uh, product.json file? That's right. right. Uh, that's what right. you are expecting. Right, right. No, we, we can't update this. Okay, we will update mm -hmm. model only. Means model. when we mm -hmm. have this data source ready, so we will store that data inside JSON model. Now, JSON model will have all the data, whatever we have it inside the product.json file. Okay. So now, if I go, if I want to update the data, so that data will be updated inside the model, not inside the actual file. OK, mm -hmm. so that is one basic difference. JSON model, it uh, JSON model, it's like a client side model. So whatever data that you will pass to that JSON model, that will be stored inside the JSON model, not into that file. OK. OK, fine now. Yeah. Right. So now after this, after creating this data source, so next thing is we have to provide this data source information to JSON model and how we will provide that. So, so for, for uh, initializing the JSON model, there are two ways basically. One is you can initialize that JSON model inside manifest.json file or you can initialize that JSON model in any controller file. So it's your choice at the end where you want to create the model you want to whether you want to create a model inside manifest.json file or whether you want to create that model inside controller.js file so the difference is if i am creating a model inside manifest.json file always that model will be component level model component means any controller going forward any controller can access that model means it is accessible in entire app if I'm going to initialize that model inside the manifest.json file, if I'm not going to initialize that model inside the manifest.json file, then I can initialize that model in controller.js file. So when it comes to the controller, so there you have two choices. You can you can declare that model locally for that particular uh, controller file, or you can declare that model on component level. If you're declaring that model for component level, for sure any controller can access going forward. But if you are not going to declare that model on component level, so that model will only be available for that view or for that controller. That you cannot access means particularly any other controller file, it cannot access that model. Which is being created in any other controller file. OK, so let's first of all, let's uh, initialize our JSON model. So for initializing the JSON model, let me scroll down here. So we have one models section here. Can we can you see one models here? So models, it's like a property here which we can add and inside which we can declare a couple of models here. Like for this models where it is added, it is added inside the SAP.UIFI namespace. So this is a namespace where we generally initialize the models. And there is already this models property. I didn't add it this already. It is available inside the manifest.json file. OK, so now inside the models. So there are two models by default created. Can you see now? So there are two models which are being created so far. So one is IITIN model. So this IITIN means this is a name of model. Guys, this is a name of model. Means it's like a user defined model name. OK, and this is the type of the model. So what type of model it is? It is of type resource model. So today we will not see resource model. Maybe tomorrow we'll see. So for for today, just try to understand that IETN it is a name of the model, and the type of model is the resource model, and the settings means it's like 
basically for resource model, we, we generally provide a bundle name. So bundle name means a resource model or resource bundle file name. So guys, just ignore this as of now. We'll cover this in detail tomorrow. OK, so just focus on what I'm going to create now. So now so far only two models are created here. I18 and then this one more model is there for which there is no name provided. So guys, whenever you see any model without any name, it means that model is a default model of your app. Default model means how you will call that model. You will call this dot get view dot get model. So when you when you call this method get model, you don't have to provide any model name. If you if you write also get model, still you will receive this model information because now this model is considered as a default model. And, and if you want to identify which is the default model, you don't have you just have to check inside the manifest.json file uh, for which the model name is not provided. OK, at a time only one model you can make it as default. So that's one thing. OK, always remember guys uh, at a time only one model can be made as a default. Same like what we used to do inside the view.xml file on the top. When we declare any XML namespace, at a time only one library we can make it as a default not all libraries we can make it as a default so same like that in it the same concept is followed inside the models also okay so now let let me create the json model here so for creating a json model so this is the first model it's closing at line number 75 after that this is the second model which is starting from 76 and it's closing at 80 so after that i will give comma and then I will provide the model name. So let me provide a model name as product model. OK, so that is a name of model. And after that, I'm just going to provide a type of model. So the type of model is. So what are the type of models? One second, let me go back here. And go to API reference and search for JSON model. OK, so I'm just going to create a JSON model. I'm just going to initialize JSON model. So this is a JSON model. So where this JSON model is located? So this JSON model is located in a library sap.ui.model.json. So we have to copy this entirely all the all class. Go back here and just paste it inside this type. OK, so now the type is provided. Now the model which has a type of JSON model. So next thing is how this model you want to create, whether you want to pass any information to this model that also required, right? Because if you're creating this model for sure, it needs some data. And then what should be the data source for this model? So for that, just give one comma and after that, just add data source property. And in this data source, you just have to provide the name of data source. Where it is. Yeah. That's it. OK, now the JSON model is being initialized with this data, with this product data, because we have passed that data source information to this JSON model. That's it, guys. So the one way which we have seen is through manifest.json file. So inside the manifest.json file, this is how uh, the data will be updated and it will be stored inside product model. So the next thing is. So basically model initialization is done. Data source is created and model is also updated with the data. So the next thing is how to bring this data from model and how we can